To start off today's edition, here's Donna Vitalasova with WLRN's World News segment for this Friday, February 7th, 2020. Approximately 350 people, mostly women, gathered in the Microsoft Auditorium at the Seattle Public Library on Saturday, February 1st, to attend a panel on women's rights. The event, titled Fighting the New Misogyny, featured speakers Lier Keith, Kara Dansky, Saba Malik, and Megan Murphy. Between 75 and 150 people showed up to protest the event, some dressed in black with masks on. The Seattle Public Library, together with the Seattle PD, were able to create barricades between the two groups and keep the attendees of the women's rights discussion safe from potential violence from protesters. One woman, however, 60-year-old Laura Love, who attended the talk, reported on social media that a male protester kicked her in the knee. It was also reported that at least one woman was surrounded and rushed by protesters as she was leading the event. The speeches made by Megan Murphy, Saba Malik, Lier Keith, and Kara Dansky not only emphasized the different lives of these four women, but also presented their expertise on and analysis of gender identity politics and why it is harmful to women's sex-based protections and rights. Major media outlets didn't seem to be present at the event, but many attendees had their cell phones out, capturing video and audio. The organizers of the event live-streamed coverage to the World Facebook page, where it has over 13,000 views as of Wednesday this week. Vajra Ma, a longtime feminist activist and panel discussion attendee, told WLRN that the event in Seattle was a game-changer for public libraries across the country. Quote, Now, it is known that we can hold this kind of talk and not have the TRS take it over and cause disruption and violence. Other cheap librarians are watching. Seattle has set a precedent in our favor. End quote. This January, a U.S. judge awarded 22 young women who had been tricked into appearing in widely distributed online porn videos $12.8 million in damages for the emotional trauma and reputational harm they experienced. The complainants were women aged 18 to 23 who were duped by three men running a website called Girls Do Porn. These men told the young women their pornographic footage was only meant for a private collector or for release on overseas DVDs. Instead, as BBC has reported, the videos were uploaded to Girls to Porn's subscription-based amateur porn website, and clips were shared on some of the world's most popular free-to-view adult websites. Also, despite their promise to never reveal the women's identities, the accused had shared private information about the models on internet forums. Thanks to the judgment by a San Diego court, each young woman will receive from $300,000 to $550,000. The defendants also faced criminal charges followed in federal court and were ordered to pull videos featuring the complainants from old websites. In the UK, two unknown men attacked a 20-year-old lesbian as she walked along the street in Sunderland at night. The victim, Charlie Graham, told Sky News. Got attacked from behind, got punched in the head, pushed to the floor, and then when I tried to get up, they pushed to the floor again, grazed my knees, my face, and cut my face open. Charlie Graham also told the reporters that she had already suffered five attacks for being a lesbian. Now, she says she's traumatized and is scared to leave her house or go anywhere alone. As she stated in her interviews, she believes she shouldn't be afraid to be who she is, that is, a gender non-conforming woman. That's why she's decided to show the world pictures of her bloodied face right after the last attack. She wishes to make the world aware of what gay people still face in Britain in 2020. An investigation has been launched into the incident and police officers are currently treating the assault as a suspected hate crime. The Guardian has reported on a study looking into the practice of adult men in Uganda suckling on their breastfeeding wives. According to the study, Ugandan men often drink their wives' milk before the child is fed. They say it helps them relieve stress, is energizing, they feel looked after like a child, and some of them consider it part of sexual foreplay. However, women seem to be mostly coerced into accepting this practice. One of the male respondents in the study claims that if the woman resisted, he could get violent. I quote, She can't say no because you become obsessed. It's hard to stop. If women say no, it can cause violence. It's a big issue. End of quote. Not only are most women presumably coerced, 
By suckling on their breasts, the men deprive their newborn infants of nourishment and make the children vulnerable to various diseases. As a local public health specialist, Josephine Ziva stated for a Ugandan news outlet, quote, In most cases, men suck the breasts without brushing their teeth and cleaning their mouths properly. As a result, they leave some bacteria, which are in turn sucked by the babies, who end up catching different diseases, especially diarrhea, end quote. Beside Uganda, breast suckling by adult men seems to be common practice in Tanzania, Kenya and Nigeria. In Canada, 22-year-old Marilyn Levesque was murdered by a man on day parole from prison. In 2006, the suspect was convicted of the brutal murder of his then-girlfriend, Chantal Deschenes, and sentenced to life in prison, the first 15 years of which he would not be eligible for parole. However, in 2006, five years earlier than the original sentence dictated, the murderer, Eustachio Galiz, was allowed supervised outings. Last March, he was released to a halfway house, but at his September parole hearing, he was still denied full parole, with the board commenting, quote, During the hearing, your parole officer underlined a strategy that was developed with the goal that would allow you to meet women in order to address your sexual need. The hearing allowed us to realize you managed relations with women that the board considers inappropriate, end quote. At that hearing, the board concluded Galicia's behavior, quote, paradoxically constitutes a worrying and significant risk factor, end quote. According to CTV News, it was Galicia's caseworker who allowed him to frequent prostituted women. Levesque was one of these women. Canadian parole board members stated for the Montreal Gazette, quote, if you don't have experienced board members and just new people, some mistakes can happen, some issues can happen, end quote. According to our sources, the changes to law that allegedly brought in inexperienced parole officers happened in 2017. The Canadian Public Safety Minister, Bill Blair, ordered an investigation by Corrections Canada and the Parole Board to determine the circumstances of Galicia's release and provide recommendations for change. South Korean women are urgently calling for international investigation into a case of mass online sexual exploitation of women and girls, called the N-Room. It is assumed that, within the Enroom case, two young women or girls become online sexual slaves every day. The exploiters enslave them by tricking them into sending their nude pictures or videos, as well as identifying information. Then they threaten the women they will publish the material or send it to their friends and family. The women and girls are then promised freedom if they produce more sexual pictures and videos, some of them of a very violent nature. The exploiters then post these to secret groups within the secure messaging app called Telegram that's used for online chatting and calls. According to the South Korean women who are trying to raise awareness of this issue since at least the beginning of 2019, various men created multiple such rooms or groups. Some of these are free to enter, some charge a fee. According to our sources, the enslaved women and girls were already forced to do acts such as carve their pimp's name into their skin, cut off a nipple, eat feces, or masturbate with scissors. When the victims refused to cooperate, the pimps allegedly published their identifying information, inciting Enroom members to rape them. It is supposed that these telegram groups are frequented by 10,000s of South Korean men who exchange links to those groups with each other or share them in men's online forums. The South Korean mass media have generally been silent about the case, with only a few mentions in articles. Despite the petition signed by 200,000 people, it calls for urgent investigation. You can also sign an international version of this petition at change.org. We will include the link in the podcast description. On January 25th, Maya Forstater announced on her crowdfunding page that her legal team filed notice of appeal to the Employment Tribunal. Thus, she's challenging the December 2019 decision of Judge Taylor, who ruled that Forstater's job loss wasn't due to discrimination. Maya Forstetter lost her job at the think tank in 2019 after her superiors accused her of making transphobic statements on social media. As Maya Forstetter says on crowdjustice.com, quote, I was utterly disappointed but not defeated when the tribunal ruled that my belief that sex is an immutable material reality is not protected against discrimination. The tribunal also ruled that my lack of belief that everyone has an inner gender identity which trumps sex is not protected. End quote. With this appeal, a second judge will read what the legal team has submitted and consider whether the grounds for appeal should go ahead to an appeal hearing. 
That concludes WLRN's World News segment for Thursday, February 6, 2020. I'm Dana Vitaloshova. Share your news stories and tips with us by mailing wlrnewscontact at gmail.com and letting us know what's going on.